watch you guys got another video here for you on how to avoid these major mistakes when building a new pc now i'm pretty sure that everyone has seen uh, the video on the verge about building a computer and that poor man got absolutely ripped to shreds by the internet which i thought was a little bit harsh so i thought I'd make you a video showing you some of the most common mistakes that people do make some of these are not uh, sort of damaging to the computer itself some of them are just sort of little uh, nitpicks that people like to pick up on when people make these common mistakes so let's go ahead and take a look at some of these so the first one you want to take a look at is avoid not seating uh, the hardware correctly this is normally where the memory is not seated all the way in and also the gpu might not be inserted correctly and you can run into problems uh, when you go to power the pc on for the first time so just make sure that you're seating those all the way in and you hear a click and you should uh, be okay let's move on to the cables are not seated correctly this is another common thing where the cables are not inserted all the way in and this will be your 24 pin connector is not inserted right and you won't have any power uh, to the computer normally the computer is dead and the reason why is because it's not pushed all the way home and sometimes that little cable on the end that little four pin connector on the end which is connected there uh, is not pushed in and you will have issues with that so make sure you push those all the way home uh, to get good power to the computer components this next one is a really common one which is the power cable not plugged in your cpu power cable is not plugged in or not inserted correctly or you're using the wrong cable and you've tried to force it in there and sometimes that can be a problem and you all have issues with uh, the computer with that not correctly inserted so make sure you check the cpu power cable make sure it says cpu power cable on the cable and push it all the way in and you should be okay next up we've got the good old fan in the wrong way this is a really common one and especially if it's just an exhaust fan you've got these rotating around the wrong way sometimes there's arrows on the fans that tell you which way to rotate these for air directional you can see here there's a little bracket on here and this normally tells you which side the air is going to be blowing out of and if you're having this as an extraction fan it should be correctly put in the right way now it's not just uh extraction fans it could be on the radiator if you're doing a closed loop wall cord system and you've got the fans around the wrong way basically you can have it pulling or pushing and sometimes people have them pushing in the same direction uh, on both sides and you can have instead of having push and pull you've got them around the wrong way another thing that people do forget which is not so bad nowadays is the io shield is not installed sometimes people forget to put the io shield in or they end up bending the grounding straps on the io shield this is another common thing i see or they snip them off uh, because they're getting in the way they're there for a reason to make sure they're touching uh, the metal parts of the usb ports and the other ports on there to ground them out and if you're bending those back around the wrong way sometimes you can't even get the usb in because people are bent them uh, around the wrong way there over tightening screws is another common thing these are tiny little screws people sometimes over tighten these and they can strip the threads on the screws on the motherboard and you can also end up doing some damage if it's say a radiator which has little small screws as well and you're using things like power tools like these you have to have a clutch on them and make sure that you're not going to be doing any damage if you do use some sort of electric screwdriver if you're using a hand screwdriver uh, then just make sure that you just don't over tighten them and end up uh, stripping the thread on that screw there sometimes just not getting the screw quite straight and you're going in at a funny angle can cause problems especially if you're screwing into standoffs or you're screwing into some other type of uh, bracket system where you're using a cpu cooler and you're over tightening those just try not to overdo them because you can cause yourself major problems sometimes not even tightening the screws down tight enough on the cpu can cause problems but we'll talk about that a little bit later on let's move on to the loose screws a lot of people i've seen for the first time building screws will do something like that the screw will drop and it will go into the case somewhere and it'll be rolling around inside the case it's important that you find that screw and remove it because it can ground out on the back of the board here and if it's flying about inside there underneath the motherboard 
or in the electrical components like say the power supply or something like that it can arc or shorten uh, the power there and cause major problems so you really don't want to leave loose screws inside the case and i know i've seen many many cases with loose screws in them over the years where people have dropped them and uh, caused themselves problems okay let's talk about the next one which is the wrong screws on standoffs this is another problem that people run into they use the wrong type of screw and they force it home and then they realize it's the wrong screw and then they try to remove it and then it just starts to spin and then you're going to have a hell of a job removing the standoff and the screw from the case another one is installing standoffs incorrectly they put them in the wrong position on the case uh, sometimes you might have to move one or two of them and if they're in the wrong place and they're touching the bottom of the motherboard they can shorten and ground out uh, the actual uh, board here also not even putting standoffs in can cause major problems with grounding as well next up is the good old power supply switch is turned off i've seen many people uh, forget to turn the power switch on and i've done it myself uh, where i've forgotten to put the power switch on it's very easy to do and all of a sudden you think the pc is dead for a split second but it it really sort of don't take long to work out the power is uh, off another thing is putting screws in the wrong place on the psu you can see there's designated areas here but there is a couple of little screw holes here which sometimes people can put the wrong screw in and you can screw it in here now it's not going to really damage the power supply as much but it's just going to be in the wrong position and of course people will spot it and uh, they will make sure they will tell you that you've got the screw in the wrong position let's move on to the next bit which is the hdmi cable plugging it into the onboard graphics port especially when you're using a graphics card you're going to get no display and the reason why is because you're trying to get a screen display on the onboard graphics when you've got a graphics card slotted in so if you're not using a graphics card like this you will see that there'll be blanks here and that's when you use the onboard graphics but if you've got a graphics card it needs to be plugged into this location where the graphics card is very simple stuff but people fall for it all the time next up no compound or too much compound also putting it onto the heatsink this can run into problems people put way too much compound on like this and then go squidging it down onto the cpu and it starts spurting out all over the sides and it can cause problems especially if it's conductive type of compound it can cause problems and um, it can be very messy too now how you apply your thermal compound is entirely up to you some people will use the spread method or the p method whatever method you use and some uh, manufacturers will have you put a little bit onto the cpu uh, itself and then a little bit onto the cooler and some people just put it onto the cpu it just depends on uh, what method you prefer to use but just make sure you don't put too much and make sure you put some on that's the main thing and let's talk about the actual cooler itself and the way it's screwed on sometimes people over tighten these or they don't tighten them down correctly and the actual fit fit in there is not actually pushing through and you've got one loose one and it means it's not making contact with the cpu correctly and you're going to end up with high temperatures that's another common thing with these sort of push uh, type fittings here also make sure the cable is plugged into the right header here if you've got it plugged into the wrong header that can cause problems now there's different headers up here for the cpu fan and also the cpu pump and all sorts of things here for the water cooling and other options that you may have available depending on what type of board you're using so make sure you got it plugged in to the right header on that board otherwise you're going to cause yourself a few problems okay let's move on to the next thing which is a pet hate for a lot of people not removing protective stickers these are the little stickers that are on all of your hardware and if you don't remove them it's entirely up to you but you will get the odd person that calls you out on it and because they get triggered because you've not removed the sticker from uh, the motherboard or from the graphics card or the power supply or any other hardware that has a logo what they've got a sticker on there next up is a really important one not removing the cpu heatsink sticker there sometimes you get a brand new sticker on the heatsink when you buy it and if you don't remove it and you put it down onto your cpu you're going to cause a problem i've seen this happen on the live stream for someone 
who's actually quite a qualified tech, left the sticker on and it caused a lot of problems. Next up is a real big pet hate of mine, buying a cheap PSU with low power. There is people out there that will cheap out on their power supplies and also buy something like this, which is ketchup and mustard, really cheap quality uh, components and cables, and then put that into their build. And it will have a low power 12 volt rail there, which is not going to do you very good. And when you go to plug in your expensive equipment, it doesn't work correctly or it will last for a little while and then pop and then take all your hardware with it. So what type of power supply should you buy? Well, there's loads of them out there on the market. Now, this is an entry level thermal take white label. The only reason I'm using this is because prices for power supplies were stupidly high because of the situation we're living in right now. But you really want to aim for something like a bronze certification minimum and a good uh, branded power supply and check who the creator of that power supply is and you should be okay and also get yourself a little bit of headroom on the power supply so if you need 500 watts get yourself a 650 watt just to have a little bit more headroom there for upgrades or just so the power supply isn't working so hard uh, when you're using it and that's pretty much it really so let's move on to the next one here which is your bad cable management i've seen that quite a lot take a bit of time to get your cables nice and tidy and also make sure all of the connector cables for the front uh, panel connectors are in the right uh, slots there. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to power it on with the power button. You're going to run into problems. That's another common problem that people have with uh, cables like that. So just check it out. The cable management is pretty easy to do. Just really take your time and get everything how you want it and enjoy your build. Another thing I didn't touch on here, which is the power on test. You need to make sure before you do your build and you put everything in the case and do all your cable management that the motherboard powers on, the CPU powers on, and you're getting a display of the BIOS. If you don't do this, you could end up building a computer and end up with a DOA, which is an item that's dead on arrival, and you'll have to an RMA it and send it back. And that means you have to undo all the hard work that you did with your build, and it can be a waste of your time, and it can be very frustrating. Anyway, the last thing to check is to make sure all the parts are compatible when you're ordering. The last thing you want is an incompatible part, uh, maybe RAM that's not compatible, or maybe the motherboard is a wrong type of motherboard for your CPU. And that's going to be about it. I hope this one helps you out, guys. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.